Who is Lafleur? Would you trust Widmore and Red Sox or Yankees? We'll have discussions on all that and more in today's official Lost Audio Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the audio podcast. We're here today with executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse to rehash last night's episode, The Life and Death of Jeremy Bentham. They'll also take your fan questions and drop a few hints about our upcoming episode entitled The Floor. That airs Wednesday, March 4th at 9 p.m. till 10.02 on ABC, and it's available the next day at abc.com. Also, just a quick reminder, as always, you can submit your questions theories, or whatever else you want to say to Damon and Carlton at blogs.abc.com slash asklost, and maybe, just maybe, they'll read them here on the podcast. Here now are Damon and Carlton. Bonjour, Damon. Bonjour, Carlton. We should do an entire podcast in French one of these days. That would be like four words long. Yeah. I think you just heard it. <laughs> That's exactly you heard them. Um, there revoir. it is. Au revoir. Yeah. See you next week on the next podcast. As we are building a huge Canadian uh, fan base, I do feel like you know they speak um, several languages in Canada. They do English from, and French, from what I understand. Is that several or a couple? That's a couple I, languages. You know, I, I'll, I'll I'll give you several on that. It's one more language than I speak. The life and death of Jeremy Bentham. Pretty dramatic episode, Damon. Yes, I would. Uh, this was actually. An episode of the of the show that obviously is a big turning point in, in in Lost. I think one of the big challenges for us coming out of last season was how are we going to tie up all these story threads? Because we've been telling all these stories in the future. At the end of the future storytelling, we revealed that Locke was in the coffin. So the big question is, how did he get there? And it required us to basically drop back and connect the dots between the guy who disappeared in a flash of light next to Richard Alpert and how he got into that coffin. And so the first five episodes of the season were basically the island skipping through time and Locke is basically leading everybody across the island, eventually ending up at the Orchid. And now, of course, he ends up back in the real world and tries to convince everybody to come back with him. But that's something that Jack has been talking about since the season three finale. I know. I mean, we have basically been teasing the audience for a long time about how Locke ended up in that coffin. And uh, finally, you got your answers. Yeah, that was kind of ben surprising. strangled him, yeah. Yeah. I was uh, I was kind of shocked about that myself. You know, big shout outs to Jack Bender uh, who directed that episode, and of course Terry O'Quinn and Michael Emerson. When we first saw that scene, it starts with Locke about to hang himself and ends with Ben choking the life out of him. And I think it's like it's like a six or a seven minute long scene. Yeah, but it was utterly kind of riveting. I mean, I, in my view, maybe as good a scene as we've done in the entire hundred hours of the show. I mean, I, I personally, for me, I think it's maybe. In terms of performance and what those guys did, it was just, it was awesome. It's For me, it's number two between behind the scene where Son and Hurley are waiting for the uh, for Vincent to take a dump. <laughs> he might have swallowed her wedding ring. That's, not, that's, that's, my, that's pretty close. You're not going to unseat. Somehow I thought you were going to say Charlie drowning, oh, but... Uh, well, good point. There so you number, go. number three then. Number three, But okay. it's up there. It's up there, It's in yeah. the hunt. When Terry O'Quinn and Michael Emerson do a scene together, they both just elevate each other's games. It's sort of... Uh, like classic uh, Shaq and Kobe, I think. Awesome. Well, we learned a lot, too, in, um, in Bentham. We learned a little bit more about Charles Widmore. He's obviously trying to help Locke, it, it would appear. He reveals that he was the leader of the island at some point, which is, uh, if, you, if we take him at his word, fairly fascinating. Where do you, where do you stand, Carlton, at this point in the show? Who, who, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Is Widmore, uh, <sighs> why was Widmore trying to help Locke? You know, it's very confusing. I, you know, look, I... I I'm pretty sure Ben's a bad guy. We've seen him gas uh, all of the Dharma Initiative. And well, did we see him gas them? Well, we saw... He's we... just sitting in the van, and then the gas... You know, <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> you, maybe you should change and become a defense attorney, Damon. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I didn't see his hand near a switch. <laughs> I saw, you know, a little gas container. He just kind of sat there without too much emotion while his uh, dad kicked the bucket. Will we find out, Carlton, this season if Ben is responsible for the gassing? Well, yes, I, I guess we would, but you may not feel he's responsible no matter what we see this season. That's true. We'll argue the point then. Exactly. Well, there's more to come, though. But I'm just saying that I think, you know, we, we've seen some evidence that Ben's a bad guy. Widmore... 
Yeah, we saw we saw kind of a shady video of him beating somebody up, but maybe that guy, you know, tried to steal his car or something. Well, I'm curious about obviously the end of the episode is that John Locke, who seems to be very much alive now, back on the island, he's had a couple of conversations with these with these Ajira folk, who I'm not entirely sure I trust. He's looking down at Ben's body. Ben is in a he was injured in some way, uh, yeah. uh, presumably in the crash of Ajira. Will we see more about that? You presume, and when you presume, you. I freeze out of you and me. <laughs> me exactly. Yeah, okay. Don't know That's what that right. means. You make a pre out of you and me. So we'll we'll know more about that. But we clearly, will know more about that. I can't definitely. wait to see what happens when Ben. Yeah, and, up. and look, I mean, I think the mystery of exactly what Widmore's role is, and and you know, okay, we know that he was on the island. We know obviously that he's off the island. Who this guy is, and and how the, all the pieces fit together. That's something which. You know, we're going to learn a lot more about the, as the season goes on, are we not? I would assume so. And, the, and, the, and first and foremost, and I don't think we should answer this question here because, you know, you'll be finding out a, a lot more in Lafleur. Yeah. The, the operative question is, when is that a Jira plane? You know, these scenes that we're seeing between where Locke is talking to these people that that's clearly landed on Hydra Island. Right. Um, when is that in relation to where we saw Jack and Kate and Hurley at the end of the previous episode where right. basically Jen hops out of a Dharma van? What is going on? Connect right. the dots for me. Uh, well, I won't connect the dots for you because I would give too much away, but oh. let's just say that next week in LaFleur you will get a much clearer sense of how those dots connect. Now, is LaFleur also a French word? French-Canadian. I think this it means... is kind of a shout-out to our French-Canadian friends. Does, and it means the flower? We. Oui. So w- is it about a flower? I think you could just say it's a name. Okay. Maybe it's a name. It's a, Maybe it's a name of someone that we're going to meet. Oh, interesting. Very I'm interesting. I'm excited. Let's get to the questions. All right. This is from Devira in Corvallis, Oregon. Okay. If you answer my question, it will make my day. All righty. I thought it would be fun for fans to do a lost-related word association question. I have a list of words, and I thought it would be fun to have a call and response answer to those words as related to lost. As an example, if Carlton was on the list, then Damon might say, banjo player, or that guy who was always driving me crazy in the writer's room. Uh, I understand the Are parameters. I'm looking forward to it. Apollo bars. Sugary. Saeed. Torturer. Memory. Confusing. Trojan horse. Odysseus. <laughs> Orange juice. Juliet. Purple. Gin. Hans Christian Andersen. The Little Mermaid. Blood. Uh, I don't like this game anymore. Okay, one more. <laughs> okay. Bunnies? <laughs> uh, Dr. Pierre Chang. Okay, there we go. All right. My question, Carlton, comes from Wayne Bolt. Wayne. From Norwich, England. Rock on, Wayne. Hi, guys. Excellent show. Where is the Vincent flashback episode? On a previous podcast, you mentioned that Vincent's the only confirmed character to make it to the end of the series. This gives me some hope we'll still be able to get one. Where did he come from? What did he do before being given to Walt? With Will all six seasons end up being the Vincent flashback? I, I think it's fair to say that you know certain things need to be saved for the theatrical motion picture, and combining Lost with the story of Vincent, Vincent's flashbacks, that'd make a good movie, I think. So you are confirming here that there will be a Lost movie, and it will be about Vincent. <laughs> no. Okay. I am not confirming that. Just wanted that. to make sure that that was clear. Hello, Damon, Carlton, and Chris. <laughs> oh. Well, well, well. Look who's joined the... Uh... <laughs> Would you like to, you know, write some scenes? Because we have a lot of work to, do, to okay. be done today, Chris. Chris, maybe you can answer this question if we, if we don't know the answer. A big lost mystery has been keeping me up at night. <laughs> this is from Shane in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Oh, my God. If I were in Kuala Lumpur, what would keep me um, up at night is a fear of a tiger attack. <laughs> you know? I'm just saying. <laughs> Go on. All right. So, uh, I have read so many theories online about who Annie is. I have heard that Kate is Annie, that Charlotte is Annie, that Charlotte's mom is Annie, that Mrs. Hawking is Annie, that Juliet is Annie, and now Jill the Butcher is Annie. So my question is, how in the world did Dharma make so many clones of Annie, and why does each clone look so different? Or is this another magic of the island? I'm sure you can sense the sarcasm in my question. I don't know where people come up with these silly theories. I don't know how anybody could think up <laughs> oh, some Lord. of this stuff. I might as well make up my own. I think the smoke monster is Annie. Am I right? Chris? I think you are Annie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Any I, thoughts on the matter? I think that I concur with Chris 100%. <laughs> and uh, I do feel that at one point we actually said no clones. No we, clones on the did. show Lost. Yes. It was right there under no nanobots. 
So we, you have our word. No clones, no nanobots. If that limits your Annie theories, we apologize, but um, that's all we really have to say about it at this point. This is one of the best podcasts ever, so I'm just going to try to get through it quickly. <laughs> Quick question, Carlton. This is from Molly McKinney from Plymouth, Indiana. And Molly asks, is Jin's new curly hair a side effect of getting blown off the freighter? <laughs> yes. In fact, that is true. The, 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 the truth is, is that since Jin was located inside the electromagnetic bubble and was able to move through time, but he was so close to the edge of the bubble that there was some freakish electromagnetic side effects that did cause his hair to curl. And sort of like rubbing a balloon. On your on yeah. your head. He's right on that right. he was right on that fringe between heavy electromagnetism and no electromagnetism and that only happened one other time in the show, which is when Jack lost his body hair. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, that that clears it up. And I there's just a follow up question, obviously that Molly didn't ask, but now that you mentioned this, Carlton, you have curly hair, so have you have you ever been blown off a freighter? <laughs> no. This is a family podcast. Not off <laughs> All right, moving on. Next question. Damon Hurley performs an amazing cannonball in the season premiere of season four and appears to swim easily, yet why did Hurley lose his ability to swim in episode 316? Um, Conrad Wenzel from Granada Hills would like to know. Okay, good good question, Conrad. I think that um, Hurley basically does the cannonball into the shallows of the ocean. It's a very um, sort of controlled environment. He, When you do a cannonball, you're expecting to be in a swimming scenario. He took his shoes off. But I think that when he disappeared off of an airplane and suddenly found himself fully clothed inside a lagoon trying to uh, hold on to a guitar case, I think that he, he was just panicking yeah. and calling out for help. Wh- imagine closing your eyes, Conrad, and suddenly being in a lagoon fully clothed with a guitar case. And then let's see how well you swim, my friend. <laughs> Let, let's see how well you swim. <laughs> Carlton, this question's from Lisa in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Awesome. We love Ann Arbor. Hi, Damon and Carlton. I hope to see you on the next season of Dancing with the Stars. Will that be their zombie season? I don't <laughs> yeah. quite know what that means. It, it means will, that it, she thinks that we suck at dancing. It will certainly mean hard times have fallen on us all. My question, what did Kate do with Aaron? My husband thinks her evident despair means she killed him. But I'm pretty oh. sure she gave him to his grandma and is simply heartbroken that the boy she has raised as her own son is now going to be brought up by someone else. Also, why the heck did Jack just go along with Kate's insistence that he not ask her what happened to Aaron? I mean, I understand that he wanted to get lucky and all, but sheesh. You know wow. what? I have one more question. Okay. I wasn't aware there were any questions yet. There were. There's some statements, okay. but there's some questions embedded in those statements. I'm a political science grad student at the University of Michigan, and I'd like to find a way to honor Dr. Chang. That's Pierre Chang, a.k.a. Marvin Candle, uh-huh. Wax, Joe Waxman. Do you think you could give me some uh, ideas for a scavenger hunt that ends at his former office or something? And that's all, again, from Lisa and Ann Arbor. Wow. All right. Well, starting from the, uh, the back, maybe you could just talk to the people at the University of Michigan and see if he um, deserves an honorary degree for his uh, studies of electromagnetism on the show Lost. You like to say that word. I love the word electromagnetism. Electromagnetism. It's kind of a thing between you and the uh, the powers that be at you know at Michigan. We love the University of Michigan. As do you know, this is the home of the Dharma Initiative. Is the University of Michigan, and it's because it's populated by very intelligent, uh, very broad-minded people. Hippies. The other question, oh, Kate. We'll see the pro- yes. You will find did out. Did Kate kill Aaron? Kate did not <laughs> kill Aaron. Okay, I think we can just clear that up okay. right now. But we will find out more about what happened with Kate and Aaron in the eleventh episode of this season. Ooh. How about That's that? Very specific. That's a very specific answer. What's the title of that episode, Carlton? Um, I can refresh your memory. Go ahead. What happened happened. happened. Yeah, that's right. What happened happened. Oh, you're going to like this one here. Shoot. Hi, guys. It's your faithful fan, Nevitz, here. <laughs> I don't know if Nevitz is a first name or a last name, but Nevitz is from Queensland, Australia. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so I'm sure you've probably heard by now the ever-popular Sawyer Fortoed Statue Theory. Have you heard this? I think that I know where you're going with this, but I, I'm curious to see if I'm right. Well, if you haven't, it basically states that because the scene where Sawyer gets something caught in his foot in the lie was so damn random, that it must mean that Sawyer ends up having his toe amputated because of infection, heroically saves the island's original inhabitants, and they, as grateful people as they are, create a giant statue of his foot in all its four-toed glory as a large toe 
of their appreciation. Wow, well, love guys, of the puns today. If you want Carlton to read your question, <laughs> just, just put horrible puns embedded in it. All right, go so, on. So please tell me this isn't true. I think I would rather die of laughter if it were. Oh, and I meant to ask. If Damon and Carlton were to marry, which one of you would change your last name? The fan base needs to know whether to call you Mr. and Mr. Q's or Lindelof. Wow. Well, um, I would answer the first part of the question by saying, rest assured, Sawyer will not be um, having his toe amputated anytime soon. So okay. as just as a result of that, I think you can draw your own conclusions as to whether or not the, there is a statue of him. And as for the, uh, for the second part, were Carlton and I to be married... <laughs> I think that we would probably hyphenate. That's um, true. I, I, that would I, be fair. There, there are so many other things that I would be worried about <laughs> in that in that series of circumstances. I, I feel like the first, we would just resolve and, and, and agree to hyphenate. Very good. I need to go call my wife. Um, <laughs> this question is from Ellie in Boston, Mass. The final question, Carlton. Yes. Was Jack back in the real world long enough to enjoy the Red Sox 2007 World Series win? If so... Thank you for giving poor, tortured, badly bearded Jack a small bit of happiness. If not, which one of you is the sadistic Yankees fan? Thanks, Ellie Boston Mass. Wow, that's a great question. Well, the truth of the matter is I'm a huge Red Sox fan and Damon is a huge Yankees fan. So there's a lot of uh, contentious uh, conversations about baseball, particularly as we get deeper into the season. And this year, just because the Yankees overspent... Um, and, you know, kind of completely uh, out of proportion to every other team in baseball in their um, sort of panicked desire to try to win, um, you know, that won't have a huge impact on how I feel about the baseball season. Wow. Uh, it sounds like it has had a huge impact on how you feel. And <laughs> but uh, if you need to kind of safeguard yourself <laughs> now for the in- inevitable destruction of your precious Red Sox. I would say that um, when I first saw Jack completely strung out on drugs and and crying himself to sleep every night. It was probably because he just was like, why am I a Red Sox fan? Why yeah. why can't I like a superior team? But I think I think the truth, though, is, is that the Red Sox having won two World Series in the last three years and the Yankees having won zero World Series in that time might have something to do with, you know, his mood. But I'd say Jack is probably in his mid to late 30s. So how many World Se- Let's just aggregate this. How many World Series did the Red Sox win between, say, the date of his birth and, you know, and, and the oceanic crash? How many? I think this is moving. This is, <laughs> this is going back to Nevitz. This is why we're not going to have to worry about a hyphenated right. name scenario. I, I don't think the chance just answer, is that we're going to get married anytime soon. I'll just answer the question for... Since you clearly don't want to, but the answer is zero, Carlton. The answer is zero. Well, there are those two in in oh four and oh seven, which is uh, a lot more than you can say about the Yankees. I guess it's possible that now that they're traveling back through time, someone could give Bill Buckner um, grounding <laughs> lessons, um, so that they could have at okay. least won it. Okay. In. What? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there I'm we go. We had this chat. <laughs> Anyway, I'm about to cut Damon's toe off, and that's going to be the origin of the four toed statue. I'm glad we had this talk, Carlton. <laughs> me, me too. And you're not likely to hear another lost podcast for a long time. So. Why are you trying to strangle me? <laughs> Au revoir. Bye. That's it for this edition of the podcast. You can catch us again in a few weeks with executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cues as they tease upcoming episodes. Until then, Lafleur airs Wednesday, March 4th at 9 p.m., only on ABC.